I just bought this mic stand for 20 quid off some fella down the front, and now I'm gonna smash it into fucking pieces. Let's have a fucking riot, boys and girls. Front to the back. There's never a night when we're going through the motions, do you know what I mean? If, if, if there's ever, a, if that night ever comes, that'll be the end of the band, but... Right? Right we've only ever done, we've only ever written music that we wanted to hear, do you know what I mean? So it was honest and it was real and we could play it passionately, like, every night. At the very beginning, we were so desperate to get our point across, which was that we're not happy with the state of music and we're not happy with what's going on. So we did whatever means necessary to make people pay attention. And that was the first thing, is like, we didn't really care whether they liked us or not. In fact, that was the whole point. If you, you either despise us or you fucking love us and you want us every day, like. Frank and I wanted to start a band for a very long time. It took a long time for us to actually get active about the situation and uh, we didn't really have anything in mind like what kind of style or anything we just wanted to start a band that would kind of like you know change the way people think or at, le at least like test like people's kind of perceptions of what music is our sounds quite like definitive you, you like you can listen to a gallows track and you know it's by us and there's not many bands you can you can really compare it to i mean there's a couple of bands knocking around that we get my name gets like thrown among, but we still stand out on our own. Yeah, totally. Like, so. A lot of bands get together and think, oh, we want to sound like Nirvana, we want to sound like J.R.U. and whatever. You know. Both of those bands are influences on us, but we don't want to sound like them. Do you know what I mean? We could play it passionately like every night with the same amount of conviction as when we wrote the track. So like, when people when people see that live, like they can appreciate that and they can like feel that on a separate level. Every show is different. Our live show has been it's sort of an institution for us. It's like there's it's no no less than like you go hard or like fuck go home. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that's the only way we've ever played. All we know is to play like hard and fast and smash the shit out of each other. Anything we can get our hands on the crowd, like the the venue, because that that will make the most firm impression in someone's mind, and they'll they'll get something. They'll take something back from it from like a gallo show. My new guitar must be cursed because in the first song. Uh kind of swung it around and clouted Steph around the head and knocked him out cold for like the first song and uh, he was pissing blood everywhere and I had to go to the hospital to get five stitches. So, it was an eventful evening. I've got five behind my ear. I don't know if you can see it or not. Lyrically influenced by just every every stuff that happens day to day to, to everyone, you know, like you don't have to be anyone special to like understand and, and like appreciate the levels on the same level we do because I write about things that happen to everybody. Um, musically influenced by everything really from yeah. from like power rock through to like Scandinavian hardcore, through to like math metal, tech, pop. Mm. Prog rock, jazz. I mean, we we've got such an eclectic taste of music. You know, we were pushed out of every scene at the beginning. We were never accepted anywhere. So we, that's why we played such a, a mixture of shows. Like, we have cut our own niche because we, we don't care. We don't care who we play with. We play with Pat Roach if they ask us to play with them at the Astoria. We don't care. Like, but then we'll play, like, we'll play with a couple of hardcore bands at an all day because why not? Like, if they, want, if they want us to go and play, we'll play. This is for every person in here, OK? Shush, 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 shush. Thank you from the bottom of our fucking hearts. It means so much to come all this way. Wait, 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 wait. Simmer, simmer down, children. If it weren't for you, motherfuckers, we'd be standing here playing on our own. And trust me, that ain't fucking fun.
This song is dedicated to all of you. in Europe playing um, give, it a, give it a name out there and we, when we were fortunate enough to jump on a, a bunch of shows with Newfound Glory who are lovely lovely guys um, they let us jump on one and then they liked us so much that they asked us to do another one with them and then we got to play with them at Grooves Rock in Belgium well, we've done two UK tours we went out to the States we're literally about to go and do another another tour like, in a couple of weeks and we've done loads of one-offs, like a ton of one-offs. Pretty much every every day we haven't been working on tours, we've been doing bits and pieces here, so... I've got a 50-foot fucking lead for this tour. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fucking fun. The girls' toilets in Birmingham was never the same. Because everyone's been fighting us from such an early, early, like, part of our career, we've learned very quickly that, like, you've got to... You've got to get tight. If there's any trouble in your camp, like it will all go to shit. We're all very individual, but like we can all rip on each other because we're brothers. Do you know what I mean? Like all of us, and and, and it's it's like a healthy relationship, and it's good for like if people are missing home, you know that you can always like fight with each other, and it will be healthy, and, and it won't be like that detrimental. It's never that bad though, we're pretty good, like, we, we've got each other's backs. So. It used to be really difficult <clears throat> when we used to uh, drive around in like a, a van that was like falling apart, or break down every show we'd play. And you know, you've got no money, you've got nowhere to stay, and you've got to get home for work in the morning, like back, you know, that was when the stress was like... Grinds you down. After, yeah. You're like, why am I going through this for like, yeah. just for some like, and little kid on a message board to say, Gallo suck. Yeah. yeah. The, the bullet from my Valentine tour was, that was one of the defining moments in our career because it was such hard work. We, it was really, really long drives. We were in a, in a Royal Mail postal van. Uh, we it, did break down was, every show. And the worst part was that there was no one clapping at any show. <laughs> yeah. They were just spitting at us and calling it. Throwing cans. But that's, that's, you know, that just spurred us on even further. It just made us want to get to the next show and just to, like, try and win them over. Uh, at the moment, it's like a birthday in Chernobyl. There's no one around. It's fucking freezing. A birthday in Chernobyl. There's two amazing jobs on this planet. One is being in the tattoo and one is being in a band. So I've, I really feel like I've done something right because I, I'm, I'm both, do you know what I mean? Um, I've loved tattoos from a, from a really early age, like, I'll always love tattoos. I'm, I'm, I've got a couple of tattoos. And I'll always, I'm gonna open my own shop one day, eventually, but like, for now, just tattoo like Stuart and Steph, and myself a little bit and get these two Pussies tattooed at some point when they eventually decide what they want. Virgin skin. Virgin skin. I don't want you busting out of ways. Stop it like that. If I don't want to buy you drink. So if you want to see it, don't have to hold it. You're good to be born. Never remember my name. Crowd interactions. It's been going for ages. It's like back yeah. when Minor Threat and Black Flag were playing shows. Back and when people cared and they wanted to, to see something, a show had to be more than just the music, do you know what I mean? It had to be, like, an event. And they were just doing it for themselves, so they didn't care, so they'd go out and they'd, fuck, they'd have to make people listen, do you know? They were so, like, passionate about what they wanted and what they had to say that they'd just stick it down people's throats. And I'm, we're exactly the same, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't believe anyone should be put on a pedestal. And so, like... The crowd interaction is just like, it's one way of breaking that whole thing down. To drag the show into the crowd, like, people really appreciate that, like, and they, they enjoy it and they like the fact that you're interacting and, and, and like, I love seeing people sing the lyrics back to me, do you know what I mean? There's nothing, there's no better feeling. You're looking back you know, That 100 Club show was like, everyone that was there will always remember it, I think, because it was just insane. We had to buy our own tickets off touts outside. It's, it was just like the perfect punk rock show. Do you know what I mean? Like, totally ridiculous, totally out of control. And everyone, everyone will always remember it for forever, hopefully. Like, it was one, one, of, the, one of the best shows we've ever played. Love, love, love.
Play love, lyrics.